So let's see how we can easily translate or have the same Laravel website in multiple languages. All we're going to do is make one little change in our .env file and that's it. All of the website will be translated to the other language. Of course, we are going to provide the translation ourselves, but from Laravel standpoint, it's going to be very simple. So let's start by creating a new Laravel project. And I'll do it with Composer. And let's call this uh, new project uh, support multiple languages, just as an example. Okay, so the project is being created and everything is ready and we can now open the folder containing this new project. So I'll use Visual Studio Code for that. Very good. Now, in our resources folder, we have the views folder and now we only have one blade view. This is the welcome view. I'm going to remove everything from here and now it is empty. And I'm going to paste here some very simple HTML code. And as you can see, it's, it's really simple. All we have here is a head with a title, and then we have body with heading one that says hello and a paragraph. And what we want to do is to somehow make this view, this blade view support more than one language because right now English is hard coded and we're going to support both English and Spanish. So if we serve our website the way it is now, We can see this simple HTML page and of course it's displayed in English. So the first thing we need to do to support more than one language is to stop our server and then we need to run php artisan lang publish. And as you can see a new folder was created here and it's called lang for languages of course. And right now we only have one folder in it and it is called en for English. And we have multiple files here, but I'm not going to use any of them. We're going to create here a new file and I'm going to call this new file app, okay? App.php. And this is where we're going to provide the translations to the different languages that we want to support. So it's a PHP file, of course. And what we need to do in this file is return an array. This array provides the translations to the different phrases, the different keys that we want to provide. So for me, I'm going to have three of them. I'm going to have one for title and then one called hello. And this is what will be displayed in the heading one and another one called text. And this is what we will show in the paragraph. So let me paste these three values to this associative array here. So as you can see, it's as simple as it gets. We have a key called title and this is its value. We have a key called hello and this is its value and we have another key called text and here is the value for it and these are the translations that we want to use for the English language. If we now want another language, let's say Spanish, all we need to do is to create another folder here in the lang folder. So let's create a new folder and the new folder is going to be called es for Spanish. And here we're also going to have this file, this app.php file, so let's copy this file and paste it to the ES folder. And here it's very easy to provide the translations to Spanish. So instead of these values, the English values, I'm going to provide Spanish values. So this is what I want to show for a title, this is what I want to show for hello, and this is what I want to show for text. So I kept the same keys, the same keys that I had in this file, in the English file, but the values, instead of being in English, they are now Spanish values. All that's left is using these translations in our blade view. So let's get back to the blade view. And first we need to change the language because it's not necessarily going to be English anymore. The language is going to be a PHP snippet. And to get the application's language, we're going to write this app arrow get local. So what is this get local thing? Let's look at its implementation. And we can see that it returns something called config and in config app.local. So if we take a look at our config folder, we can see that indeed we have a file here called app. And in this app file, we have local. Here it is. And what does local return? What is the value of local? It's something from the environment file, from our .env file. The default value is English, but it can be any other value we specify in the .env file. 
And if we take a look at our .env file, we can see that the local specified here is English. And this is why the default language is going to be English. But we can easily change it to any other language we want and use it in our application. So if, for example, I'm going to change it from English to Spanish, and of course the value we provide here has to match the value in our lang folder. So because here I have ES, this is what I wrote here. So now when we change the value in the .env file, this is what we're going to retrieve from our configuration. So once again, here the local is retrieving the value from the .env file and because the value now is Spanish or ES, this is the value the config will retrieve. So if we get back to our blade view, we should now be able to understand why app get local returns the value we provided in our .env file. Now, if you really want to be on the safe side, you should make sure that your local doesn't contain underscores. Because in PHP, many times we use an underscore to specify the local or the language. Many locals are defined this way. But the HTML format doesn't use underscores, it uses hyphens. So to be on the safe side, we should replace every underscore in the local with hyphen. And this can be done with str replace. So in our local, we want to replace all of the underscores with hyphens. And now our language should follow the HTML format. Now that we specify the language for the page, we need to use the values we provided in our language folders. So instead of title, I don't want the title to be hard coded anymore. So let's delete this one. And once again, we're going to write here a simple PHP code. And it's going to look like this. It is a function called underscore underscore. And as a parameter, we need to pass a string to it. The value of the string is the name of the file that contains the value we want. Now, this file, of course, has to be in our languages folders. So as you probably remember, we have an app.php file in both our English folder and our Spanish folder. So because the name of the file is app.php, I'm going to write here app and then dot and after the dot, we can specify the specific value, the specific field, or the key that contains the value that we want to show. So here we can see the different values that we have, the different keys. And because this is going to be shown in the title, I want this key, the title key. So let's copy it and paste it here. So it's going to look like this, app.title. And this is going to retrieve the title field from the app file, or from the array returned from the app file. Now, what about the h1? It's going to be very, very similar. So let's copy this and paste it here instead of the hard-coded hello. But the key is going to be different because once again, we're going to get this value from our app.php file. But this time, instead of title, we want the hello value. So we need to provide the hello key. And we're going to do the same thing for our paragraph. And once again, we need to replace the key. So instead of hello, this is going to be text. And if we serve our application now, we can refresh our page and we can see all of the values displayed in Spanish. And if we look at the source of the page, we can see that the language is indeed Spanish. 